uh, balance changes, uh, the Parzival, the Richthofen, and the Graf Zeppelin twins. Um, they had a change parameter for bombers, increased chance for hitting two bombs at once in an inter internal dis dispersion ellipse. What does that mean? Um, so if you have a reticle... <clears throat> make this a little bigger, please. There we go. If you've got your reticle, you know, that you're dropping in, there's technically two sections of the reticle. The inner and the outer. Yes, I realize the reticle will shrink and, you know, it'll get to a smaller area. But for demonstration purposes, you've got the any, you've got the Audi. So we can label this with a color. Um, we'll do outer and then we'll do inner. Whatever. Um, initially, when this stuff was all designed, bombs tended to trend toward the middle. Just like uh, shell groupings. They would group primarily here, but they would scatter out. Uh, lightly further and further out you would go but people found that you could just bingo a dd and slaughter them with like the six bombs off uh, midway and stuff so it was changed so that the bombs primarily land on the outer ring and disperse inward to a small extent um so it's almost like the bullseye is on the outside and the dispersion goes in um However, maybe that's not technically the case. Maybe it's more like 70% of the bombs are out here and 30% of the bombs are here. However, it's done. It's mathematically weighted. So this Parzival whatever means that instead of an average of two bombs being in the outside and one being on the inside, theoretically, you have an average of two on the inside and one on the outside. Or at least it increases the chance. So um, means it's more likely to actually hit well, where you put the target, as opposed to the edges of the target, which German carriers tend to drop all the way on the edges of the reticle, because reasons. Um, and that actually includes for the Graf Zeppelin, so the Graf Zeppelin will be a little more centered, which is nice. For the FDR, um, I think there were some people that were a little confused about this. So, two things. Change the uh, torpedo spread by 5%, and increase the arming distance by, what is this, 5%? 15 to Ferrar. What is what is that? Mm. Divided by 517? Does that give me the ratio? Yeah, it's increased by basically 5%. So what does this mean? Well, before we do that, we can kind of look at this. Maximum bomb damage was decreased by 600. Woo! 600 damage! which HE actually hits for one third of its rated damage, so that reduces each bomb by 200 damage. Woo, 200 damage. If it's saturated, it reduces it by half that as 100 damage because you would do less damage overall. Something that confused people was the reduction of pen from 64 or 67 to 64. That's evidently tied to the mass of the bomb. So by making a bomb that has X amount of explosive material, the game kind of automatically fact finds and figures out this is what its pen is. So when they reduced the size of the bomb, it now pens less. This has no function, uh, this doesn't matter. There's no 65 mil armor in the game that I'm aware of. So whatever they could hit before, they can hit now. That didn't change, they just do a little less damage. Um, and it also reduced the fire chance as well because of either that's manual or that's because of size, I don't know. Um, but so it's losing a little damage per bomb, and then there's this 5 percent -y stuff. What does this mean? What does it mean? Um, so if you've got your, your Richthofen reticle, you're going to start all the way out here, and you're going to firm up to something like this. It's pretty terrible, whatever. Well, adding 5%, let's do this with, like, pretty-looking lines. So it'd be something like that. And you might have a battleship, which is yay long. So it works out. If you had a cruiser, the cruiser would be something like this. So it's it could fit, but it doesn't fit as well. But if we look at a battleship, we'll do that. If we looked at a cruiser, we'll do this. These cruisers tend to be thinner. And let's try to reframe these to make them look a little prettier. So if this was the old reticle that has eight torpedoes in it, you've now increased it by 5% which means it does this. Wow, that doesn't matter. But let's look at it. Let's look at two parts of it. If we extend out the green reticle compared to a cruiser, 
it does actually matter compared to a cruiser. So what's the 5% gonna do? It's gonna lessen the impact on a, on a cruiser by probably one torpedo. Does it matter? A little. That's potentially 4,000 less damage, 3,000 less damage delivered to a cruiser. And frankly, the FDR's interaction with cruisers are very powerful if it lands the torpedoes. The bomb reticle is pretty large. You're probably not going to consistently do a lot of damage to cruisers with bombs. Nobody really likes the rockets because they're pretty... They're not great. Uh, they're, they're the backup weapon. So it's really, if you could torp like a Petro and deal 24,000 damage to it, wham! That Petro's hurting. That's a pretty significant amount of oof. Um, increasing the reticle size means you're still able to affect battleships, but you are less effective against cruisers. Secondly, increasing the arming distance means that there is more travel time, because uh, arming distance is based off travel time. So it may have had a 3 second arming time, and now that got increased by 5% to whatever the hell that it is 3.15 second arming time give or take maybe it's 3.2 now um what does that matter well that's 1.5 seconds more of maneuverability before the tarps arm that's a little further you have to drop if a a uh, ship for instance has an island that's right here well this additional arming time means that you have to drop back there and you can't because there's an island in the way so it's a little more uh, a little more space between the edge of the island and the ship that you could come in and drop, forcing you to drop from the other direction as opposed to uh, in what would be thought of as a safe direction. And there's another reason to think of it, <clears throat> another way to think about this, which I think is very important. So if we look at this, 5%, who cares about 5%? 5%, who cares about 5%? People that don't want to sledgehammer their game do. So if you saw this change, instead of looking like this, they did, okay, well, we increased the dispersion on the reticle by 50% because it was too effective. Suddenly, you're really less effective against cruisers. You're extremely less effective against DDs if you torped destroyers at all. And you're even uh, pretty significantly less effective against battleships as well. So isn't it easier to go by 5%, see how it feels, go by 5% more, see how it feels, 5% more, see how it feels, and eventually dial it in to where it's going to feel comfortable or where it's like it's going to seat properly. Also, the amount of damage here is really not that much. So, for instance, if we go to uh, warships, we'll look at the midway, just because it's a tier 10, tier 10 CV. If we look at the midway and we look at the average damage numbers, FDR does 95. Other stuff tends to be about 80 to 85. Cool. Midway is actually at 70, but I think they it this one has been played more than double of everybody else and has the lowest win rate, so probably most people like the midway so they get it, but they don't necessarily know how to play by the time they do. If we kick this up to 50%, still a little bit lower, but more in shouting distance. FDR is going to take off by roughly 10%. We go up to 25. What's the difference between the FDR and everybody else? About 7%. Go up to 10. 150s. We see a lot of 130s, 135. Maybe that's another 7 to 10%. So you don't have to adjust this by like, bam, 20% less damage. The damage comes from the bombs and the torps, not really the rockets. So you start chiseling down. You, you reduce the torps a little. Reduce the bombs a little, see where it goes. Reduce the torps a little, reduce the bombs a little more, see where it goes. I mean, this is going to be a big change in the average damage. In terms of kills, the kills are pretty much on point. Win rate, win rate's pretty much on point. Average planes destroyed, sure. Average experience, sure. So like, if you look at all this stuff, this is not that crazy. The outlier is the average damage. Um, personally, my nerf to the FDR would be taking it from 14 planes down to 12 because it's overbearing when it does find a solo ship and it can just dunk on the ship four and five times because it can't bully off the planes. But realistically, if you, if the team has an enemy CV, it has a friendly CV and the friendly CV should give a shit. They should come over and fight her to trap the planes because they can, FDR planes are very slow. Um, but if this is the only real outlier, if they tune down the damage a little at a time, they just kind of Tip this down into place. Now you'll notice the Immelman is riding pretty high. 
uh, along with this, this is a coal ship. This is going to take a significant investment in time to get coal. So this is going to be for players that are a little more long term. This is a steel ship. This is a much more significant investment of time. So it's not odd to see the FDR outperforming other ships for same skill level players. But at the same time, how many battles does this have, the FDR? So this, this has literally a tenth of the midway battles. It has a little more than half of the Monfred. It's got a sixth of the Hawk. Like, it's still probably only, only helmed by people that are a little stronger at the game, which is why I'm sure the devs were a little reticent to chip the average damage down because you just assume those players are probably better. But if it can perform so consistently higher than everything else, then they're going to chip it down a little bit, see what happens, see where that goes, see where it takes them. At least that is my assumption. So that's probably a, uh, a fairly large explanation. Was that good enough?